Nucleophilic addition reactions are characteristic reactions of aldehydes and ketones. And understanding its mechanism helps us predict the different kinds of products that are formed in the different chemical reactions of aldehydes and ketones. Now when you look at an aldehyde or a ketone, you can see that the reactive part of this compound is, yes, you guessed it right, the carbonyl group, C double bond O group. The carbon in this carbonyl group is electrophilic or electron deficient. And this is because it is attached to a highly electronegative atom like oxygen atom. The oxygen atom draws electron density away from the carbon atom and this creates a partial positive charge on the carbon atom and a partial negative charge on the oxygen atom. And this electrophilicity or the electron deficiency of the carbon atom is what drives this reaction forward. This carbon center has now become highly reactive and has become a perfect or an attractive site for any electron rich species like a nucleophile to attack. Now another thing we need to remember when we talk about carbonyl compounds, aldehydes or ketones is the structure of the carbonyl group C double bond O. You see the C double bond O group is planar. It has an sp2 hybridization and all the atoms lie on the same plane. Now when a nucleophilic species attacks this electron deficient carbon atom of the carbonyl group, delocalization of pi electron takes place and the electron density shifts towards some more electronegative oxygen atom and this produces an intermediate as you can see here. This addition of nucleophile changes the hybridization state from sp2 to sp3. Now this is a slow step because forming a new bond between the nucleophile and the carbonyl carbon requires some significant rearrangement of electrons. You see, a nucleophile is electron rich and as it approaches C double bond O group, it faces some resistance electron repulsion from the electron cloud of the double bond. And not just that, in order to form a new bond, we need to break this existing stable arrangement and that demands more energy. All of this makes the first step substantially slower than the rest of the steps. Now the next step produces a neutral molecule. As you can see here, the alkoxide ion abstracts a proton from the medium and results in the formation of a neutral molecule. This step is a fast step. Now at the end of this reaction, what you can see is an addition of a nucleophile as well as a proton across the C double bond O group. So this is what basically happens in a typical nucleophilic addition reaction. So let's quickly solve a question to see if we understood this mechanism thoroughly. All right. So let's look at a question here. A carbonyl compound reacts with HCN in the presence of a base to form an intermediate, which finally gives us a neutral compound as you can see here. So I'm going to let you pause the video here and try attempting this question. All right. We need to figure out what the structure of A would be. Is it an aldehyde or a ketone? And for that, I'm going to give you a clue here, which is the mechanism itself. So using this mechanism, Try working it backwards and figure out the structure of A. So pause the video and try giving it a shot. Now if you compare this reaction with a mechanism, you can see that a carbonyl compound A undergoes a nucleophilic addition reaction where our CN- is the nucleophile. In the presence of a base like OH-, it abstracts the proton from HCN generating an even stronger nucleophile which is the cyanide ion. And this reacts with A to give us an intermediate, which finally gives us the cyanohydrin compound. So if you work it backwards, the intermediate should have the same exact structure without the proton, correct? So the structure of our intermediate would look something like this, where we have the same skeleton, except we have O minus here instead of OH. Now from here, we can easily figure out the structure of A, right? Because if you remember, in this addition reaction, we are essentially breaking a C double bond O group to form a C nucleophile as well as a C OH group. So this double bond is breaking into two single bonds where one single bond is between the incoming nucleophile and the carbonyl carbon and the other single bond is between the OH group and the carbonyl carbon. So using this, if you work it backwards, you can see that the final structure should look something like this, where the CCN and COH bond combine to form the C double bond O group. And as you can see, a starting compound is a ketone. So if you work out the mechanism of this reaction, it would look something like this. All right, so let me remove this part. The cyanide ion attacks the carbonyl compound 
gives us a tetrahedral intermediate where the O minus abstracts the H plus ions and gives us the final cyanohydrin compound. Now in this final compound, what if we had a hydrogen instead of our methyl group? In that case, a starting compound would have a hydrogen atom here, which means now we have an aldehyde. So essentially we have a benzaldehyde as a starting carbonyl compound. So I hope this example helps you clarify any doubt that you might have with respect to the mechanism of our addition reaction.